And so today, we're announcing something very special. We're announcing NVIDIA NVLink Fusion. NVLink Fusion is so that you can build semi-custom AI infrastructure. Not just semi-custom chips, because those are the good old days. You want to build AI infrastructure. And everybody's AI infrastructure could be a little different. Some of you could have a lot more CPUs, and some of it could have a lot more NVIDIA GPUs, and some of it could be somebody's semi-custom ASICs. And those systems are so insanely hard to build. And they're all missing this one incredible ingredient, this incredible ingredient called NVLink. NVLink so that you could scale up these semi-custom systems and build really powerful computers. So this is the NVLink Fusion. Whether you buy completely from us, that's fantastic. Nothing gives me more joy than when you buy everything from NVIDIA. I just want you guys to know that. But we're giving away $10,000 in cash and joining is super easy. All you have to do simply is liking this video and comment your NVIDIA price prediction and share this video with at least one friend. That's it. You're officially entered. Don't miss your shot. $10,000 could be yours. It gives me tremendous joy if you just buy something from NVIDIA. <laughs> and so we have some great partners. We have some great partners, Lchip, Astera Labs, Marvell, and one of our great partners, MediaTek, are going to be partnering with us to work with ASIC or semi-custom customers, hyperscalers, who would like to build these things, or CPU vendors who would like to build these things, and they would be their semi-custom ASIC provider. We also have Fujitsu and Qualcomm who are building, semi, who are building their CPUs with NVLink to integrate into our ecosystem, and Cadence and Synopsys, we've worked with them to, to transfer our IP to them so that they can work with all of you and make that IP available to all of your chips. So this ecosystem is incredible, but this just highlights the NVLink Fusion ecosystem. Once you work with them, you instantly get integrated into the entire larger NVIDIA ecosystem that makes it possible for you to scale up into these AI supercomputers. For me, away from the technology news, the, the absolute key piece of, of importance was Jensen Wan talking about his relationship with Taiwan and NVIDIA's relationship with Taiwan. The basic plan is to build a supercomputer for Taiwan, but he was kind of at pains to point out that this is in partnership with TSMC um, and other leading names that are Taiwanese champions. Purely from a geopolitical perspective, how crucial was that or how high level was that uh, for Jensen Huang to say such a thing? It's very important, and NVIDIA, with, with uh, Jensen Huang at the helm, has been on quite the tech diplomacy tour, the chip diplomacy tour, uh, really over the past few days in the past week, including in Taiwan, as you referenced, where they're talking about building a supercomputer. Taiwan is a very strategic partner, a trusted partner of the United States. It's very important for our shared security. Um, and that's right off the heels of uh, some major deals announced in the Gulf over the, over the weekend and, and late last week with Saudi Arabia with the UAE, who also want to be global capitals when it comes to artificial intelligence. And there's going to be more sharing of advanced chips there. So all of that is really important as the United States seeks to secure trusted uh, partnerships with important partners across the globe uh, when it comes to advanced semiconductors. Michelle, those deals with Gulf nations, how concerned are you that they can act as sort of backdoor indirect access for China? to U.S. technology? It, it's definitely a concern among uh, some in the U.S. government, including in Congress. But I'll say the big picture is we have to do two things. One is maximum proliferation of American technology, including our semiconductors, because if it's not our technology, it's going to be our adversary's technology like China. So max proliferation is really important. At the same time, we also have to have maximum security controls to make sure that those those technologies, including chips, don't get diverted toward adversaries like China. Those two things have to happen. It can be done, but it requires that companies 
and the U.S. government and our allies, by the way, work really closely together. And that's what tech diplomacy is all about. And I think you see the White House, the Commerce Department, as well as leaders in Congress with the new CHIP Security Act, making sure that those security controls are in place. Jensen Wong's text diplomacy, I think, it is worth lingering on. Uh, Taiwan is clearly important to NVIDIA, and, and, and we remind ourselves that the mainstay of TSMC's lead edge fabrication is in Taiwan. But China is also important to Jensen Wong, whether that market is closed to him or not. Is he getting the balance right? Well, it, it's interesting that you mention that because on this tech diplomacy tour, there were the deals announced in the Gulf. There's the news in Taiwan today. But let's also not forget that he announced a new research center in Shanghai just a few days ago. And it's no coincidence that all of these things are happening in the same time. And look, he's, he's got a global business to run. He, he definitely has multiple interests that he's trying to meet. What we have to make sure from a U.S. national security standpoint is that all of that doesn't endanger uh, American national security and give some of our most advanced technologies to China. So the role that he plays uh, in working together with our government, we have to make sure that business objectives meet national security objectives, and that can be done, but we have to be working together in order to do it. In January of this year, Anderil's co-founder, Palmer Lucky, told me point blank that they are preparing for a scenario where China invades Taiwan at some point in the coming years. It is one severe outcome. Take that argument and, and extrapolate it out to AI infrastructure and semiconductor manufacturing uh, and Taiwan's role in everything that we've just discussed. Well, it's a reason that we have to make sure Taiwan's resi resilience and the U.S. resilience when it comes to these critical sectors like semiconductors uh, is, is really strong. And so partnerships like with NVIDIA, TSMC is investing another $100 billion here in the United States to build out its fabs, to build out advanced packaging facilities. All of that has to scale uh, so that we have uh, some more strategic partners. And, and it's also with other allies like Japan, like Korea. SK Hynix is investing in an advanced manufacturing facility um, for semiconductors at Purdue Research Park, where the Kroc Institute is. All of that has to happen more deeply and at scale in order to make sure our shared uh, resilience and security, because we have to be prepared for a scenario like that. But rather than just try to slow China down, we have to make sure that we are turbocharging our, our own supply chains, our own resilience, and our collaboration with our allies. The Nasdaq is down about a percent today, and my next guest is warning the rebound in big tech stocks has been too far too fast, as you can see on that screen there over the past month. He says it's time to hoard your cash and then pounce on the next correction, which might not be too far off. Paul Meeks is with Harvest Portfolio Management. He is the CIO. Uh, so today, a, a bit of a fit. It appears they're throwing over bond yields, you know, 10 years up at 460 right now, Paul. But is, is that the gist of your argument here or, or more? That's a uh, perfect executive summary. And first, with the bond yields, if we get back to five where we had been, uh, not too long ago, then Katie barred the door for not just tech stocks, but all aggressive growth stocks. So I am worried about it. 